Yes. All right, we'll call meeting to order with the roll call. Pike? Here. Frenchman? Here. Schulte? Here. Gargano? Here. Ganey? Here. Friends? Here. Anderson? Here. Knudsen? Here. Stevenson? Here. Here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The council will receive information on unagenda topics brought before the council and members of the public. The council will not, uh, will not discuss these topics and will not take action on any of them at this meeting. Is there anyone who's on the agenda wish to be heard? We will go to consent agenda. One motion approves all consent items. Number one is approved minutes for the meeting held on January 23rd, 2023. Number two, approved and I January 2023 paid bills. Three, received January 2023 building permit report. Number four, approved and I application for cigarette and tobacco products retail license for Smoke World Vape LLC, DBA Smoke World Reesburg, 2255 East Main Street. And number five, approved and I application for cigarette and tobacco products retail license for SSS Wisconsin, BRW LLC, DBA SQRL service station <laughs> number 708. 306 East Main Street, formerly Sunex Service Station. It's called Squirrel That's Service squirrel. Station. Squirrel. That's <laughs> QRL. <laughs> Any questions on the consent, or I will take a motion. Motion to approve. Motion by Kaney. Second. Seconded by Siemenson. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, general business item one is approved and I resolution 4504-23 authorizing the issuance of up to $1,931,878 in eight cents uh, taxable communications utility system revenue bond to evidence reimbursement obligation with respect to letter of credit. Brett Schauer, how are you tonight? Good, yourself? Good. So I guess most of you, I guess, Sonny, I don't know you, but uh, I'm Brett Shuffner, General Manager of Reedsburg Utility. Um, so most of you have heard this before, but uh, if you look at the map there, that's our construction project uh, we got going out uh, for the fiber optics. Green is already completed and in service, and then any of the colored areas are additional construction areas. Um, we have received quite a bit of funding for these projects through multiple sources, uh, one of them is called the uh, Rural Digital Opportunity Fund, RDOF, you might have heard it as, uh, through the FCC. And then also we've um, received multiple uh, PSC broadband grants, uh, totaling over like $14 million worth for that. Um, the RDOF funding is another $6.4 million, yeah, $6 million over 10 years. So we get $643,000 a year for that. Um, one of the requirements for the RDOF funding is a letter of credit we have to have uh, on file with uh, the federal government until we get this project completed. We have six years to complete the project. Um, and then each year, the letter of credit is a varying amount of our annual support. So the first year we had to have a letter of credit in the amount of 643,000. This year we got to have it in uh, 943,000 or something like that. And then, uh, they're all kind of laid out in your packet there. Um, it varies by year. Um, and the maximum amount is on year 2025, where we got to have that $1.93 million letter of credit. Uh, we're getting the letter of credit through Community First Bank. And um, there's obviously a fee associated with the letter of credit. This bond is basically our um, collateral for that letter of credit um, that uh, Community First Bank would hold. Um, it would only get drawn on if for some reason we were in default and then that letter of credit got uh, drawn on. So um, Tom had asked about the 18% interest. Um, that's just uh, the interest rate that they threw in there. We don't pay that interest unless that letter of credit got drawn on and then Community First Bank would draw on the bond, but um, if that uh, ever happened, then obviously we would refinance and uh, get a better interest rate than 18% on that. Um, and just for reference, uh, one of the requirements 
in the construction is by the end of year three, we have to have 40% of that project completed. After one year, we're already at 24%. So I'm not really too concerned about the meeting, meeting our timelines. Um, we can actually next year reduce requests to the federal government to reduce our letter of credit down to back down to one year support because we've already hit 20% this year. So by the end of next, this upcoming construction season, we should be well over 50% of that project completed. So I guess I'll take any questions or if you want me to explain any more on this, I can definitely dig into it. Any questions for Brett? And I guess we worded this one, if you remember last year, we just addressed the letter of credit last year. This year, we worked with uh, Quarles and Brady, and we're addressing it for every year that we have to have this letter of credit. So we, you won't have to see me next year. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, go ahead, Dave. Right, last time you were here, you indicated that there was some supply chain dis difficulties, but it wasn't going to hold you up. You didn't feel, is, is that still the case? It's still a challenge, very much so. Um, and project costs are extremely higher. When we applied for that RDOF funding, it was about a, just over a $30 million project. Um, our most recent rest estimate was about $43 million for that same project now. So basically all the PSC, that $14 million of grant we got is just covering inflation anymore. So it's, it, yeah, it's supply chain is still a challenge. We're, we're managing it. We actually have all, pretty much all of our materials we need for this upcoming year. It's wonderful. Good. Any other questions? Just for clarification, it is a revenue bond does not adversely affect the city's debt ceiling and or our ability to borrow. So. It is a taxable one too, so we we'll come against that. Anything further? Take the motion once in order. So moved. Motion by Ranchway. Second. Seconded by Peterson. Roll call next day. Yeah. Take a roll call whenever you're ready, Jay. Aye. Aye. Ranchway? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Cardano? Aye. Any? Aye. Friends? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Bye, bye. Thanks, Brett. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You too. All right, number two for general business is going to be struck from the agenda uh, that will come in a later meeting. So we'll move to number three is approved and I first reading and set of public hearing for March 13th, 2023 for ordinance 1953 23, amending sections of chapter 349 intoxicating liquor and fermented beverages in the city code. Chief, how are you doing today? That's right, thank you. Uh, the reason for the amendment would be to clean up and clarify some of the language that's in the ordinance, specifically 349-14. Max uh, reviewed the ordinance and language and read the suggestions that you have in front of you for this. Take any questions that you have. Questions for the chief or Max, anything you want to add? <clears throat> no, it's just a language issue that the chief had brought up, so we tried to um, clarify the, the ordinance so that it's easier to enforce in the event that there's any violations. Any questions? Phil? So was, was this just a unique thing that didn't get caught when we did the, the ordinance, the redo, the codification? Yeah, I think what happened was um, we weren't having a lot of issues with people walking out the back door into a parking lot. I think that's what this is kind of addressing. Correct. It's, yeah, so it's, it's taken bits and pieces, like sub C would be struck and combined. So it's okay. just taking bits and pieces, I think, and putting it together and then making sure that because if you like sub C, it's anywhere in a public place or open to a public place. And just, it's just okay, because this is the first time that we've had to do this ourselves since the recodification, correct? Yeah, this would yeah. this would be something that we'd have to do ourselves because it's pretty uh, it's specific. Unique. To are. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, I'll take a motion to set public hearing. I move to set the public hearing for uh, March 13th. Yeah. Motion by Peterson to set public hearing. Second. Seconded by Knudsen. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We'll have that on March 13th. Recommendations from Board of and Commissions. We have Public Works. Approved and I authorize the city engineer to accept the public bid for Laurel Street reconstruction and County Road H water tower drainage improvements. Steve isn't here. Steve, Steve is took not. a trip to Baltimore. Yeah, he did. Go look at some equipment. <laughs> so maybe on the day you could uh, fill us in. Yes, I will try. Um, those bids were opened, and we have a good, good idea. Um, and I guess we know where we're at. It, it, as it says, uh, we're asking that Steve be authorized to accept the bids for Laurel Street construction and County H uh, water tower drainage, which is a separate project that is part of the utility, but we are in, in partnership with. And those bids came in where we expected or even a little lower than. So the recommendation of Public Works was, was to approve. Any questions for Dave? Well, then, the form of a motion, Dave. I will make it in the form of a motion to approve. Motion by Knudsen. Second. Seconded by Siemensen. Is there any other questions? All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> City administrative reports. Economic update. Tim. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, so in, at the end of January, uh, Kurt Muko and I were requested to make a presentation at the Sauk County Economic Development Committee. And when we did that, um, I thought that we put together a, a PowerPoint presentation. And when you take all the projects that we have and that we talked about, I thought this is really a really nice list of things that we're doing. So maybe you guys would like to take a look at this and I'll give you an opportunity as kind of, I don't, I don't want to give you the whole presentation because you've been here for all of it. Um, but um, I would like to kind of just go through slide by slide quickly and see if you have any questions or concerns or any comments about the projects as they're going on. It's just nice to have a place where it's all together because a lot of times you'll see these things bits and pieces as they kind of filter through meetings and not realize just how well we're doing. And not a lot of communities can see that. And I think that was, uh, that was a point that was driven home even at that committee presentation. So. Um, talks about the Holly Inn Express. If you've been up there, you see they, I don't build hotels, so I guess I don't know, but they've got the, the columns for the entryway there. That was a priority to get those in first. <laughs> That's just how they're doing stuff, but the slab is there, the utilities are in. Uh, the East Side Business Park expansion, uh, that's currently getting ready to go out to bid for the EDA project. Once we sign our contracts and accept the bids, then we can start doing development agreements with companies that are interested in going out there. And right now there are three. Um, DRM Electric Code, I don't know if you guys remember that, uh, Planning Commission probably does, but they, they doubled their capacity over there. Uh, Saputo Cheese, we know about that. We just we're finishing up on the developer's agreement with that. That should be signed within the next week or so. And then the West Side Commercial Building, if you've been over there, that is by far our fastest project. That has walls up already, waiting to put the, uh, the roof on there. And um, he's got, I want to say, two or three of those already spoken for. Still won't tell me what they are. <laughs> um, we went, uh, so our RICBC, we're hosting these uh, breakfast meetings, breakfast, business breakfast meetings. And one of the things that came out of there was uh, a need for child care and some, some, somewhere just to address child care. So we created an ad hoc committee for child care initiative and we've met probably three times now. And we're starting to get a really good handle on what's needed. We sent out a survey to businesses. We actually wrote the survey for businesses to send to their employees to make sure that the businesses were aware of the child care needs that they may have in house. And then part of that will be an effort to partner with those businesses to help subsidize the daycare that we uh, that we currently need. Um, so we have another um, uh, breakfast meeting that's coming up at Madison College on the 23rd of March. So we're in the process of getting that all planned up. And what we'll do is we'll kind of go around, we went RMC and then the high school and now Madison College, and we give those guys an opportunity to talk about themselves a little bit, as long as they're gonna be hosting the, the uh, breakfast at their facility. We have kind of a Q and A, there's a city update, and then we have breakfast, and then they usually take a tour of the facility that they're visiting. So it works out really nice. Um, rail usage, I know that's been a priority to make sure that the rail stays viable in town. Um, as you can see, it's increasing like crazy, and Rippy has signed another contract that's going to double what he brings in per week. 
So he's going to keep that very busy over there. Matter of fact, he's he's going to come to plan with some more uh, advanced plans than what he had thought he was going to need to begin with. And then Hankey's obviously still doing what they're doing. That's building three. That's not building three, but it is building three. So building three uh, got approved by the state for Huntington Park. Um, and we talked a little bit about our housing. Um, we have 100 new housing units over the past three years. Those are including our apartment buildings. Uh, we've had a really nice blend. We are uh, heavy on multifamily. And based on what we hear, that's where we're supposed to be. Um, and again, we still have between 250 and 300 full-time jobs that are available in the city. And that average wage is 18 to $25 an hour. Uh, we talked a little bit about um, our population growth again. If you remember, we said this before, but we're basically responsible for 34% of Salt County's growth, just our city alone. So because of that, um, a lot of our family, <laughs> our single family lots are getting eaten up. There's 66 of those left. Those aren't 66 that are like available, available. A lot of those have been sold and purchased and, and they're gonna be used um, in the near future. Uh, we do need to talk about an updated housing study. The last one we did was 2018. Unfortunately, Sauk County is not interested in partnering with us with that. Um, they're not interested in talking about housing at all. Uh, they want to leave that up to the individual municipalities to take care of. Um, I highlighted our school district partnership, uh, the tech ed house flip that we did, um, the Vine Street one you know about, the Eagle Street uh, flip we're going to close on this week. Um, I think we have I want to say $150,000 in that project combined between us and the school district, we're selling for $180,000. This is for one seventy nine nine. We got one eighty out of it, so <laughs> twice. <laughs> uh, South School Rehab that's currently um, going on. I encourage you guys to, to take a step over there and, and see what Dan's doing. Those apartments are amazing. One, two, and three bedroom. Um, our gym. We're right now we uh, we have the floor down. And we are framing the bath. The bathroom is right now in the hallway. That's really our last step. We're going to do, put some electronic uh, door locks on there, and then we'll be done. We're hopefully we'll have people in there using it in March, if all goes well. Um, Parkside Village. That's the senior, the 55 and older development uh, adjacent to Nishan Park. Um, that's I think 100 and 118, something like that. So. Um, we're very close to getting that one signed for a developer's agreement. So you should be seeing that come across. Probably they wanted to get it to this meeting, but our numbers didn't come out fast enough for them. So I suspect it'll be the second meeting in February that will tell you who that developer is and what they plan on doing. Um, suffice it to say, we're going to move things around a little bit. There was some a little bit of static that we caught from uh, from plan commission and from some comments about where we're going to place things. So we're going to move some buildings around like that just to make sure that we are, uh, we're cognizant of the concerns of the neighbors. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be coming here. And again, if you remember, that's a um, $35 million development. Uh, so some of our quality of life stuff, as you know, in the past three years, we've probably done five parks with six and seven coming online next year. We did apply for uh, the Vibrant Spaces grant for the farmer's market, the old theater site. The splash pad was completed last year and our all abilities park. We have that ready to go. I think we're going to break ground in April or May on that one to get that one done. And again, that one's totally uh, supported by donations. Uh, the field house, if you're out in that area, you saw we moved a lot of dirt today. So we got into the ground. We had our, I think it was our pre-construction, pre-construction <laughs> meeting. There was another one next week, but we might just be <laughs> say hi to everybody. Um, but yeah, so that's going well. Uh, we will be applying for an early start for the metal portion of the building. The way the develop, uh, our contractor wants to do it is get everything graded, metal building, which is going to take him the longest to do. And then once he's completed in there, pour the pad for the, uh, the fabric structure. And once the fabric gets on site, that's two days to put up. So that's kind of the direction he wants to go. And then there's the vibrant uh, public space grant that we applied for. We don't know if we've gotten that yet, but we have applied for it. We seem like a really good fit for that. <clears throat> Regardless, we do have a, a donor that's interested in supporting us on that project as well. So if we don't get the grant, we'll still be able to fall back on that donor and then park impact fees to help finish it off. 
Uh, that's where we bragged about the utility for a little while. Oh, is it still there? Yeah. <laughs> so we bragged about the utility for a couple minutes there. <laughs> Uh, we talked about the wastewater treatment plant, um, hopefully breaking ground on that in 2024, treating water by uh, 2026. And then we talked about Viking Drive going to the south and having that entrance into the uh, in the industrial park and a little bit more about the uh, expansion to the east for our business park. And then we just talked about the comp plan. Um, I think that's the last slide. Yep. Yeah, so I guess this is your opportunity to ask questions about the projects that we have. I know that normally we do a lot of our stuff in closed session, but this is your chance to have it on the agenda and out in the open so we can ask any questions that you may have or not have. That's fine. Just one word, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Compiled all together. No, it's all together like that. Yeah. It's, it seems like a lot. Yeah, we have a lot to brag about for sure. A lot of good work by this council. Okay. Any questions? If I can ask a quick question online, yeah. um, I, what's the timeline on the 55 and older when? So we had originally thought that would be a phase project. So phase one and two, um, our developer is not interested in phasing it. He says he wants to get in there, pull up a trailer and work until it's done. So he thinks two years it will be completed. That's amazing. Thanks. Any other questions? I have one question. Yes. With DRM's expansion, are they going to the new part of the industrial park? Or are they, they, know, they, they expanded on site and they're already done. Oh, they're done then? Yeah, so they doubled the size of their current facility, but that does electric coat and there's still a powder coat business that they'd like to do, which I'm like, I have a spot <laughs> ready for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Tim, thanks for bringing that up. Okay, thank you. Awesome idea. Uh, commission, committee, board, and staff reports. Historic preservation. Uh, we met tonight. Um, we talked about new projects and then procedures for grants. Very good. Library board. Library board met last Thursday. Uh, we arranged the weather not to be bad so we could continue our meeting. I hope you all appreciate that. Uh, we had a rather brief meeting. But we did approve the 2022 uh, director's report to uh, the State of the Library, and Sue Ann is going to be finishing that up uh, as we speak because she was off uh, having surgery. She will remain off for the next couple of weeks, but she will be doing a lot of work from home. Uh, other than that, uh, there's going to be one additional staff retirement uh, later in February, and we're just going to be uh, reallocating those hours to other staff members and kind of realigning in the hopes that we can we can do it with the existing staff rather than bringing on one more individual. So um, that's the state of the library for this month. Thanks so much, Mike. I can't help but notice the green leaves in the tree behind you in the window. They're plastic, Dave. They're plastic. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, any other committee, commissioner, board, or staff member that they want to report? Your Honor. Yes. Public Works. Public Works had a meeting out of the normal this last month we addressed the laurel street project we did have some other bids that came aboard um but we found a glitch in the posting process so we've had to go back and reopen that and redo that process so that'll be forthcoming um as tim mentioned or you mentioned uh steve isn't here this evening he's in baltimore maryland or outside because we've got a group of people there looking at equipment that will most likely or possibly be part of the new sewage plant. Um, there's very few of them across North America, new technology and requirements by the EPA and, and um, with the price tag of like $6 million. Correct. And, <laughs> and with that kind of a price tag, we thought that look at it. we wanted to go and see it in operation. So we've got guys out there doing that. And the last bit of news is that for Tim and sorry, but we are changing our time again to accommodate um, a member of the <laughs> committee. So we will in the starting the next meeting next, yep, next week, week Wednesday. we will be meeting at 530 here in City Hall. Yes. What, what Dave, is, Dave is too polite to say is that it was the newspaper. We made arrangements for our official newspaper to publish our, 
our advertising for Ben and they forgot twice in a row. Well, oh, that was the glitch. So this is a, this is the second time this has <laughs> happened to us. So we do select that official newspaper every uh -huh. April. So maybe keep that in mind next time we do that. That's that's unfortunate, especially when you talk about timelines. All right, that's for sure. All right, anything else? Officer the mayor, just want to touch base and thank everyone uh, that had anything to do with and uh, contributed either by helping out at the auction or donating or bidding. Um, we're running up the bid. We're running up the bid. <laughs> I want to thank Phil personally for filling in for me that night. It was a real quick meeting, I understand that, but thank you for uh, running the meeting that night on Monday. It was a whirlwind week, but uh, well worth all the time and effort. We raised like just over $61,000 in that amount of time for all the nonprofits at the United Fund helps out so that sets the buy pretty high, the bar pretty high for next year but uh we look forward to the challenge so thanks everyone that had anything to do with it so um with that i have nothing else we'll go around the horseshoe tom nothing tonight Dave Peterson. nothing tonight thank you phil peterson uh nothing new but um with the anticipation and excitement of the last meeting i did forget to ask our friend virtual Mike Gargano, if he had anything to comment on. We went around the horseshoe, so I, I surpassed him, passed him over last time, so. I'll make sure I ask him twice. Good, <laughs> good, I appreciate that. <laughs> Missy Friends. Nothing tonight, thank Adam you. Adam Keeney. Nothing tonight. City Attorney Max. Yes. Nothing for me. Jay from City Hall. Uh, just a reminder, next Tuesday is the spring primary election. Uh, there's one office on the ballot at Supreme Court. <laughs> We did request an absentee ballot. We're asking that everyone get them mailed back by tomorrow just to make sure we get them in time. If you want to vote in person, you can do that every day this week from 7.30 to 4. On Friday, you can vote until 5. And on Monday, we're closed for all voting activities. So you'll have to vote on Tuesday if you don't get here this week. Thank you. Thanks for all your work with that stuff. Tim Becker. Nothing tonight, sir. Mike Cargano, anything from the last meeting? No, nothing from the last meeting, but for this uh, week, uh, Mr. Mayor, since I won't be seeing you tomorrow night at plan, I just wanted to wish you an early happy Valentine's Day. Oh, you know what? I really like that, Mike. I appreciate that. You are you're my, my Valentine here at the end of the last year, but you, you're late to our date. <laughs> oh, Jason Schulte. Nothing tonight. Craig Rashford. Nothing tonight. Sonny Hyde. No, just appreciation to Tim for the presentation that made it into the agenda tonight. It's really exciting to see all the pieces and kind of one big picture. It was awesome. So yeah, it's like it's the, exciting. The board I was, wow. I mean, we yeah. definitely have a lot going on. So. Good stuff. I guess to summarize with that is enjoy the dirt being moved here this spring. <laughs> there's going to be a lot going on. Uh, with that, I'll take the motion to adjourn. So move. Motion by high. Second. Second to approach. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, everybody. Mike, what's the temperature over there? Yes. It was 70 on the weekend. Today it was about 50 and breezy. Oh, very pleasant. Oh, very pleasant. Oh. Yeah. Winter's you're, awesome. you're having a nice weather week, too, I understand. It's, it's like 48. Not too bad. That's awesome. Yeah. It's